Hello everybody and welcome back to another Flask tutorial. So as you guys might be able to tell, we are starting off fresh here and what I'm actually going to be doing is talking about static assets or static files. Now in Flask, there's kind of a weird way of displaying images and loading in your own custom CSS classes and using your own custom JavaScript. So I'm going to cover that quickly today and then in the next video we're going to talk about blueprints which is what a lot of you guys have been asking about on how we can actually make our Flask app into multiple Python files and kind of split it up and make it a bit more organized than what we had before. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Since I'm starting fresh, I'm going to create a brand new project to refresh you guys on kind of how we do this, create the directories on all of that. So I'm just going to make a file. I'm going to call this main.py. This will be where we actually have our Flask app. And I'm just going to go through and quickly do some things. So I guess say from Flask, import Flask, with a lowercase l and import render underscore template. What I'm going to do now is just create a brand new Flask app. We already know how to do this under underscore name, underscore underscore. And now we'll just create a very basic uh, kind of home page function here. So app dot root. We'll make this just a slash home. I'm also going to show you that we can do more than one root to these functions. So I'm going to do another one for slash, which now just means this function can be accessed by both of these different routes. So I'm going to say define home. And then here we're just going to return render template and we'll call this one home.html for now. And then we'll do something with that. Okay. So now let's run our app. So if underscore underscore name equals equals underscore underscore main, I believe we say, what is it? App dot run and then debug equals true like that. Okay. So that should be all that we need to do if I didn't make any mistakes for the main file. Now what I'm going to do is set up a template file. This is where we're going to put all our HTML files. So to do that, we're just going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one templates, and then I'm going to make another new folder this time. And we haven't seen this yet. I'm going to call this one static. Now you might already be able to tell where we're going to put specific files, but essentially any static file we have, which means not like a changing file. So for example, JavaScript, CSS, images, I believe there's some other kind of static files as well are going to go in this static directory. And then all of our HTML files that we're going to be rendering again, will go inside this templates folder. So inside this templates folder, I'll create a new file. I'm going to start with a base.html. We'll also make a new one while we're here and we'll call it home.html. We'll start coding up the base.html file and then I'll talk about creating a few files inside of our static um, directory and how we can import our own custom CSS and then an image as well. So let's just create a very basic HTML. I'm going to avoid putting um, the bootstrap stuff in for now just because it's going to take up some time and we don't need to waste that because we know to do that already. So in the head, we'll set up a title uh, like that. And then I don't know why it always does that adds the other bracket. We'll set up a block. So we'll just say block title if I could type correctly and then end block. Now we'll set up a, some body tags here. So body and then see why did it always freaking does that. Okay. And then we'll add another block percent percent block content and then percent percent and block like so. Okay, so now that we have that, we have our base template. So let's extend this base template. So percent percent, this is going to be inside our home.html file again. We already know how to extend, so extends base.html. And then we'll add our blocks here. So pretty straightforward. Percent percent block content. And then percent percent end block. And then we'll add our block title, which I guess I'll just copy this and put it at the beginning to save us some time. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just fill in these blocks quickly with what we want to display and then we'll actually get into the static files. Uh, I know I've wasted a bit of time here, but we just need to set this up from the beginning. So for our title, I'll just call this home page and for our block, let's just do an H1 and let's just do home page because I'm just going to apply some basic styles to this so that you guys see how this works. Okay, so we have our home.html file kind of messy, but that's fine like that. We have our base.html file and now what I want to do is show you how we can import our own custom CSS. So to import our own custom CSS, we're going to create a new CSS file inside of our static directory. So to do this, I'm just going to call this style.css. It doesn't matter what you call it, but make sure you, that you remember the name. And now I'm going to show you how we can actually load the CSS file from inside here. So to do that, what we're going to do is say link rel equals style sheet. I'm going through this kind of quickly as well, because I realize a lot of you guys know HTML, so you probably know how this works. And then I'm going to say href equals, and then this is where it gets a little bit different. So make sure you're paying attention. Now inside of our 
kind of Flask application, it sets a default that all of our static files will be saved in the folder called static which means you actually need to make this folder called static on that I'm showing right here. It needs to be called that because what we're going to do is grab the URL for that static file and then reference the actual specific file name that we want inside of here. So to do that, we're going to say URL underscore four. And then here we're going to put the name of static. So we're just going to say static like that. And we're going to say file name equals make sure you don't forget the quotes and then here the name of your CSS file. So in this case, style.css. The way that this works is essentially we're going to use the Python code here to grab the URL for the static folder, which will give us the URL to here. Then we can specify the exact file name in this case is style.css. And then we'll load that in as a style sheet. Now we might also want to do a type equals, and I don't actually know if this even makes a difference because sometimes I do it without it and it doesn't do any different. Uh, we'll just say text slash CSS. And there we go. We should now actually have loaded in our style sheet. So I'm not going to really talk about how CSS works. It's just a very basic styling, but to kind of make this easy for us and see that everything's working, I'm just going to set a body color. So I'm just going to say body color. Um, I don't know what's let's just do some random uh, F F E. Uh, I don't think I can actually do E F F A. Why not? I don't know what color that's going to be, but I guess we will see. Okay, so now that we've done that, I think we're actually good to go ahead and run this and see if this is working properly. and We're actually loading this in. So give me a second. I'm just going to CMD into this folder and then we'll be right there. Okay, so Python main.py just ran this now. Sorry, that just took me a second. Going to open up a web browser here. Let's get this in, drag this over, and you can see we get homepage showing up in this kind of weird blue color because that is, well, I guess whatever the color is I decided to make with FFA. But anyways, that is how you load in static CSS. Now, if you wanted to have your bootstrap in here as well, which you likely would, I'm just going to grab it. I have another file open here that actually has that in here. What you do is just put your bootstrap HTML or bootstrap CSS uh, link above the other link. So what you need to do is put bootstrap up here, then you put the link to your custom CSS file. And then that way, if you do it correctly in your CSS file, you can actually override these bootstrap classes and made, make your own kind of custom um, HTML and stuff. So if you see this, like when I refresh that, you see that this text gets changed because we had the bootstrap load in here, but our color is actually staying the same because that color is going to override by adding that to the body tag like that. So anyways, it can get a bit confusing when you have multiple kind of style sheets you're referencing and you need to override specific styles, but this is kind of how you do it. You're going to put your CSS styles in here. Now I just want to show you that we can actually create folders within our static folder. So if I wanted to say that all the CSS for a specific part of my website is in one folder, maybe it's like the login page or the user sign up or something. Let's just say um, styles like that. I'm going to create a styles folder. I can move the style uh, file into that folder. So I'm just going to do this through subline. So styles like that. And now what I would do if I want to reference that is rather than saying file name equals style.css, I'm just going to say styles slash. And then in this case, where to go style.css. The reason that works is again, because we're going to reference this static folder. And then once we're in that folder, we can just type the absolute path to whatever file we want. It will grab that for us and render it. Okay. So we've done that now. And lastly, to talk about images and then the JavaScript, if you know how to do this, you'll know how to do the JavaScript. So it's not that hard. So I want to actually uh, reference an image and display that on my web page. Some of you guys were asking about this. How do I do that? Well, we need to grab an image first of all and throw it in our static folder. So let me do that. If I can actually find an image, I don't know where I saved this. Okay. So I found an image. I just threw one into the static folder. This is what the image looks like. It's just off my website, Python programming tutorials. And essentially I've just thrown it in there. Now what I'm actually going to do is create a new folder in here and just call it images. And then I'll throw that image in there just so we keep things um, nice and kind of clean here. So I guess I'll move that one back in. Probably should have created the other directory first, but that's fine. And now to reference that, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for this style sheet here, except we're going to do it with an image. So really easy. I'm going to just copy this link tag. You don't have to actually, it's probably easier just to type out the image, but anyway, we'll paste this in here. I'm going to change this tag to say image like that. We'll get rid of rel. We'll get rid of type. And then our href will just change so that it references the images folder and it references image.png, which is just what I named my image. So let's do that. So I realized that I actually need to change this to source, not href, because href is actually going to be the link. That's why this wasn't working when I was messing with it before. But let's run this now. And when we do, we see we get this Python showing up here. I'm still not really sure why this homepage has kind of disappeared. Maybe I did something with the color. 
Um, but anyways, there you go. That is the image for us. It's showing up and that is pretty much how you work with static files. I mean, we have style in here. We know how to reference that by just going, where is it here? Uh, by doing URL for our static folder, then we just type in whatever it is that we need. And then if we go to home here for the source, same thing, URL for static and then file name equals and then whatever that file is. And that is pretty much all there is to using static files. Now, if you're going to use a JavaScript file, same thing here, right? You'll do your script tag like that, or you'll link rel JavaScript, um, and then just load in that specific JavaScript file. And then that will actually work for whatever class you're doing. So that is pretty much it on how you use static files, images, and JavaScript. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. And in the next video, we'll be getting into blueprints, which is kind of how we can organize our document a little bit better.